Hey everybody, QuestWise here, and boy, oh boy, do I have a game review for you today. This game is currently on Kickstarter. I will put a, no, a link to the, uh, the Kickstarter down below in the notes. So as soon as you're done, finish watching this video. Uh, I urge you to run over and, and put your name down for a copy of this. Um, you know, pledge uh, what you'd like, but this game is something, uh, if you're a fan of anything role-playing, you're going to love this game. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why uh, I was so excited about it and why I've fallen in love with this game instantly. Uh, and that game is Lost in the Fantasy World. This is by uh, Old Skull Publishing and Gallant Knight Games. This is, it's already funded, but the Kickstarter is still going on for a while now. I was sent a review copy to check this thing out, and I instantly fell in love. Um, this is a game that is about playing kids uh, who are lost in the fantasy world, just as the title describes. The reason I love this game, and you may have heard me talk about this in the past before, um, I love books that are books, movies, TV shows, whatever, that are that are visitation fiction, or sometimes it's referred to as portal fantasy. People from the real world, our real world, going into a fantasy or science fiction world and trying to survive, trying to find their way back home. Um, this game is, is inspired by things like the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon, um, which is very, very portal fantasy. Um, uh, some of the other stuff that instantly came to mind for me was Terry Brooks did a series of books called uh, Magic Kingdom for Sale. Um, think John Carter of Mars, uh, any of those kind of things, right? Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, where a person leaves the normal world and has to go and use their sort of life experiences to try to help them survive uh, while they're lost in the fantasy world. Now, this game is perfect for things like, uh, it's, it's perfect for an introductory game. The rules in this book are super simple, um, but very streamlined, but very, very elegant. And that's one of the things that I found really fascinating about this game. The rules for combat are two pages long, and one of those pages is an example of play. It's that simple. It's simply rolling a d6 uh, in opposition to whatever the game master or the mentor is what they're called in here rolls, and you're trying to roll higher than them. And then if you do, if you succeed in that, you get to narrate what happens in the scene. Combat is uh, detailed in a way that you're going to do the same thing. You're opposing somebody or some creature. And in doing so, if you beat them, uh, everybody has traits, characters, creatures, bad guys, all that stuff. They have traits, not hit points. And every time you're successful in combat against them, they lose a trait. And once they lose all their traits, they're knocked out. And same thing for characters. Uh, characters lose all their traits. They're simply helpless. And they have to narrate out the scene as to why they're helpless. And um, and it can be, you know, as, 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 as mortally damaging as you want. If they lose all their traits and it fits the storyline and that's what your group wants to do, that character could die or they could just be knocked out. They could be just knocked senseless. They could be uh, terrified and they can't act anymore. But this game is so elegant and simple. And the reason, one of the ways that I judge a game, and this is purely my, um, my preference. This is purely how I judge whether or not I'm going to enjoy a game, if it's going to be a good game for me. Uh, and that is the minute it sparks my imagination. The minute I pick up a game and I get caught up in the rules, and I caught up in the world itself and the, in the types of stories that that game is trying to tell. And my brain starts to put together instant scenarios, puts together campaigns, put together stories and narrative, uh, you know, driven lines and stuff. To me, that's the sign of a good game. If it sparks my imagination, from page one, this game had my mind going in 500 different directions. I started to come up with storylines. I started to come up with ideas for further campaigns. I started to come up with ideas for um, 
you know, nemesis, bad guys, villains, all that kind of stuff from page one. Now, this is a game, like I said, is very, very good for introductory games. And it's kind of meant uh, and, and it's written in a style as if that someone, an older person, were teaching somebody the first time they're playing role-playing games. So I, it's not as detailed as something like D&D or Burning Wheel or something like that. It's not that detailed. There's no real crunch to this at all. Like I said, most of the time you're rolling a D6 and trying to beat a number. And all the rules in combat cover maybe three or four pages in this whole thing. So it's not not something that that you're going to want to play if you really want crunch, if you want a lot of sort of, um, you know, uh, super, well, I want to say super in-depth storytelling because I think this lends itself to that kind of an idea. But hopefully you understand what I'm saying. It's not something you're going to play if you want sort of like super, super long-term, you know, 10-year-long campaigns and stuff like that. The goal is to basically get the kids at home. One of the things about this book, uh, and like I said, the rules and combat and everything, the first, maybe not even a quarter of this book, the rest of it is what is called the Mentor's Scroll. It's sort of the Game Master's Guide. And it's a whole bunch of tables. A lot of them were inspired uh, by um, Ben Milton's um, uh, Maze Rats game. If you haven't checked that out, I have a review back in the list of the annals of my uh, of my videos and stuff as well too. It's one of my all-time favorite games. It's a super simple, like a pamphlet type game, that it's all just generated using table, random tables. Uh, and so the author of Lost in the Fantasy World used a lot of those tables, and and made you know kind of changes to the fit this world and stuff, um, and used those in such a way to create um, a lot of resources for the game master or the mentor in this case. To come up with things like villains and obstacles and <clears throat> world settings and that kind of stuff. How to get back home. What the kids must do in order to create those possibilities to return home and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of information in here on how to run a game if it's your first time. Um, there's a lot of great information on how to you know, entertain players. How to entertain yourself. How to run a good role playing game. How to tell a good story. There's a lot of great stuff in here that, that, that covers maybe like three quarters of this book is all that kind of stuff. Uh, in the back, there is an adventure. Um, there's also a, a a bunch of tables that are sort of like random places in a fantasy world that you can use or use to help create your own places. Um, I find them all very fascinating. And I think it would be cool as if, if each one of them were a different place. There's no real map to this world. It's not, you know, it's meant to be made your own. Um, you may well know that I really love narratively driven games, and this is definitely one of those games that fits in that category. When you're successful at a task, you're going to, as a player, get to narrate sort of out, out how that scene takes place. Um, and if you fail, then the game master also gets to do that as well, to narrate out what happens. Um, but the rules are super simple. They're very, very intuitive. Um, they're super easy to teach. You can create a character in about five minutes um, using random tables uh, or just suggestions from the tables to create your own characters and stuff as well, too. An amazing game. I cannot say enough about this. I cannot wait till this. I, I might run this online even, but I can't wait to maybe take this to a school and... Um, you know, uh, and run it for some kids or even just run it for my local group. Cause I think even adults would have fun playing this, they're having this idea. And I, like I said, I have some few, a few friends as well too, that love things like portal fantasy or visitation fiction, love that kind of stuff. Now it, it's definitely a game in which you are trying to solve problems and you're trying to get your way back home. But it feels very much like this D&D cartoon. And if you've never seen these things, um, I think I grabbed this one. Um, this is just the nine episodes. It's like kind of the primer. It's not all the seasons. But um, I think I grabbed this at like, I don't remember. It was like five bucks. Um, but what's in interesting about this, and you can watch some of these online as well too. But what's interesting about this is that um, while the kids... Um, have these very, and we'll get to that in a minute as well too, but as the kids have these artifacts, these these weapons, these these items, these magic items that help them along the way, a lot of times they'll get into situations where they realize that they can't fight their way out of it. They're never going to take down Tiamat, right? Venger is always going to be a thorn in their side. And 
what happens nine times out of ten is that they leave and try to come up with a plan or try to find help to solve a problem and get past this obstacle. And that's exactly what this game really, really motivates you to do. To think about things, to try to problem solve your way through situations or to find somebody, an NPC or a fellow player, who can help you get past an obstacle. And it's wonderful for those types of things. Get your imagination churning and, and thinking about how to problem solve and how to overcome obstacles and such. Now, I mentioned artifacts. One of the things that happens when you come into the fantasy world is that you, every character is given an artifact, a powerful um, weapon or tool or item um, that has no description to it whatsoever. It's just a simply a name, right? Um, and what I really, really enjoy about the system is that the players and the game master their mentor through gameplay will come up with ideas on how these items work. So just as a, as an, as an uh, example, um, I want to give you a title of one of these artifacts and, 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 and just so you can see the possibilities of things that can happen, um, in, in, in this, in this game and this, this thing. So, um, you have, uh, uh, the crossbow of guidance. That's all you're given. As, as a new player, you're given this item called the Crossbow Guidance. You know what it's called, but you have no idea what it does, right? So during gameplay, you could come up with ideas, be like, um, "Well, I don't really, we don't really know which direction to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tap into the power of my artifact, the Crossbow Guidance. I'm gonna fire a bolt straight up in the air, and I'm hoping that the bolt bolt will go up and point the direction that we need to go. And the mentor will sit with the player and be like, "Yeah, that seems plausible. That's that's a cool idea." And you'll get to do this thing and add this power to the artifact. And as you sort of role play things out and begin to describe the story and stuff, you'll begin to see your artifact grow and your character grow. The other thing that's really amazing about this game, and this I wish more role playing games would do this, your character advances by failing. Every time you do something that you don't get your way or you fail at, you get an adversity token. And these adversity tokens can be used to, you can spend them to add a plus one to your roll, or you can use them later to buy new traits, change traits, find items, all that kind of stuff. I love this idea. And there's a few games out there, Burning Wheel does this and a few others, but I wish more role playing to do that. Because you learn through your failures in real life. You learn through mistakes that you make, right? Um, you, while, while being creative and, and, and problem solving, you come up with ideas um, through adversity, and that's how your character grows in this game, is by using adversity tokens that you can use to sort of learn from your mistakes and your failures and push your character forward. And I love that. I think it's just a great, great concept. And it's such a simple concept. Um, and, and so I think it, it's, it's a really cool concept, a really cool idea, and I think I really wish more games would do that kind of a thing. That when your character actually fails at doing something, or they have some kind of mishap, something happens, they're going to look at that situation and be like, yeah, I probably could have done something a little better in that situation. And then come up with a new way to do it, using these adversity tokens to further your character and have them grow in this fantasy world and learn more about ways to get back home. Currently on Kickstarter right now, Lost in the Fantasy World by Old Skull Publishing and Gallant Night Games. Go check this out. You are not going to be sorry. Until next time, I'm Questwise. Game on, my friends. I am out.